All right, on 6-3, I'm going to skip the entire first page. So I'm going to start on the second page. <clears throat> so if you look, these might look kind of intimidating, which they do, because we have fractions divided by fractions. So what you need to do, now there are steps on the first page, but I'll just explain to you what you're going to do. So the, what you might want to do first is to get all those little tiny fractions to go away and make just one fraction. So what you're going to do is you're going to find the common denominator for both the top and the bottom of this fraction. So I have an x, an x squared, and an x. So my common denominator would then be x squared. So you're going to multiply each of these terms by x squared. So 1 times x squared is x squared. If I have 3, and I'm, I can make this over 1 if that's helpful, because when you multiply fractions, you just multiply straight across. So I'm going to get 3x squared divided by x, which turns out to be just 3x. This is going to give me 2x squared over x squared, which turns out just to be 2. And I'm going to move to the denominator. 1 times x squared is just x squared. And I'm going to get 2x squared divided by x, which turns out just to be 2x. <clears throat> now you just have one fraction. So now you're going to do what we did in the first section of the chapter, and that is to factor. So up here I have a trinomial. So two numbers that multiply to get 2 and add to get 3, that's going to be 2 and 1. The only thing we can really do down here is to factor out an x, and then you're left with x plus 2. All right, and then you're going to cancel. That cancels out. You're left with x plus 1 divided by x. And these x's cannot cancel because this goes together. If there's an addition or subtraction sign, all of that is a package deal. You can't get rid of x unless you have a plus 1 as well. Therefore, this is the final answer. All right, I'll do six last. I want to do um, number seven next. <clears throat> okay, so the first thing I want to do this time is to change my negative exponents to positive exponents. So this becomes 1 over x. Now I'm, I'm working in the numerator. So I'm looking at just this right here. That becomes 1 over x plus, now only the y has a negative exponent, so it's going to be x over y. Okay, now I'm going to move to the denominator. Okay, that's going to become 1 over y and then plus 1. Okay, now it looks like number 5. So what I'm going to do next is find the common denominator. So I have an x, a y, and a y. Looks like the common denominator is going to be x, y. <clears throat> you can make this over 1 if you'd like to help multiply. So I'm going to multiply each of these four terms by this to make my little fractions go away. So if I take 1 times x, y, that's x, y. That's going to give me x. You could do this off to the side if you want. So 1 times xy is xy. x times 1 is x. The x's can cancel out, and you're left with just y. Now I'm going to multiply these two fractions together. So I'm going to get x squared, y on the top, and then y on the bottom. The y's are going to cancel, so we get x squared. Now we're down here, so I'm going to take 1 times xy and get xy, and then y times 1 is y. The y's are going to cancel out. These y's are going to cancel out. You're left with just x. And then I'm going to multiply 
these two together, and I put a 1 there if that's helpful, I get xy over 1, which is just xy. Okay, after you multiply by the common denominator, you're going to factor if possible. The only thing you can do is factor out an x in the denominator. So I'm going to keep the numerator the same, except I'm going to switch x squared and y, not that you have to. Take out an x, and you're left with 1 plus y. Nothing cancels out, because again, if you have an addition sign in between two terms, that whole thing is grouped together. So nothing can cancel out. So this is your final answer. Okay, let's look at 8. Okay, I don't have any negative exponents, so I'm going to go ahead and multiply by the common denominator. This would be x over 1, and these two denominators are x and a y. So xy together makes up the common denominator. Okay, now I'm going to multiply. x times xy, that's x squared y. Now I'm going to put a 1 under here if that's helpful. So if I multiply across, I get xy on top, x on the bottom, the x's cancel right here to get y. Now I'm going to multiply these two fractions. I'm going to get xy on top and y on the bottom. The y's cancel out, so you're left with just x. There's nothing I can factor, nothing cancels. Again, all of that goes together because there's an addition sign in between them. So that's as far as you can go. Okay, let's go back up to number six. Okay, this time the denominator has an addition sign in it, but that's okay. So if you have an addition sign, that's one thing there. So I have an x plus two and an x as the denominator. So those two things together make up the common denominator. Just like here on seven, the denominators were different, so together they're the common denominator. Same thing over here, they're different, so together they make up the common denominator. <clears throat> These two things are also different, x and x plus two. So together that makes up the common denominator. I'm going to put a 1 underneath it, just so it looks like a fraction. I'm ready to multiply. If I multiply those two fractions together, I'm going to get 2x, x plus 2 in the numerator, and then x plus 2 times 1 is x plus 2. Well, the x plus 2s are going to cancel, so I get just 2x on the top. Now I'm looking at the denominator, so I'm going to multiply both of these now by the common denominator. If I multiply straight across, I get x, x plus 2 in the numerator, and then x plus 2 in the denominator. Those are going to cancel out, and I'm left with just x. Okay, now I'm going to multiply this fraction and this fraction. If I multiply straight across, I get 2x, and then x plus 2 in the numerator, and then x in the bottom. These x's can cancel, so you're left with 2 and an x plus 2. Okay, you can't cancel yet because my denominator is not simplified. Plus, I have a bunch of addition signs, which means all of this goes together. So I have to simplify all of that. So 2x stays on top. If I distribute this 2, I get 2x plus 4. Combine like terms, I get 2x in the numerator, and then 3x plus 4 in the denominator. Since I have an addition sign, this goes together. Nothing can cancel, so this is my final answer to number six. All right, let's move on to the last page. Okay, so now on this
this page, we've got equations. So we have to think back what we did in lesson 6-2 because it looks like we have adding and subtracting fractions. But number 9 you don't, and I'm crossing off number 10. And I'm changing question 12. First thing you want to look for is if you have a proportion. If you have a proportion, you're going to cross multiply. I'm going to cross multiply. So 6 times x plus 4 equals 5 times x minus 3. Okay, now we're going to distribute. <clears throat> so I don't have to worry about any of this yet because it was a proportion. So I'm just going to solve like I would solve from here. 6x plus 24 is on the left. And then 5x minus 15 is on the right. From here, I'm just going to solve for x. So subtract 5x over to here. Subtract 24 over to here. It's going to be negative 39. Now, you do, even though it's a proportion, you also need to do this last step. So when you get your answer, you have to check and see if it satisfies the problem. <clears throat> so we can't divide by 0. So if I look here, x can't be 3, otherwise it'd be 0. And x can't be negative 4, or it'd be 0. So as long as it's not 3 or negative 4, then your answer is fine. So number 9 is negative 39. <clears throat> okay, now 11 and 12 are not a proportion because I have an addition sign. So what I need to do is, first of all, factor the denominators. Looks like the only one I can factor is this one. So I'm going to take out an x, and I get 2x plus 1. <clears throat> okay, so what I need to do is figure out what the common denominator is. Well, these two are different. And, well, first, I'm, I'm sorry. First, we're going to look to see what's the same. These are the same, so I'm going to bring down one of those. These two are the same, I'm going to bring down one of those. So those two things together make up the common denominator. And since I have an equation, I'm going to do that. Okay, now I'm going to do what I did back still on... 6, 2. So after I factor the denominator, I'm going to find the least common denominator, which I just did. Rewrite the fraction with the least common denominator. Okay, I'm about to do that, which, well, I kind of did do that. Now i got to do the numerator. So I'm going to multiply each numerator by what's missing from its denominator. So this one right here only has an x. It doesn't have a 2x plus 1. So we're going to multiply the 1 by 2x plus 1, which is just 2x plus 1. The second fraction has a 2x plus 1, but it doesn't have an x. So we're going to multiply that 2 by x. This fraction already has what it needs to have in the denominator. So I'm going to just leave that the same. Now before I solve the equation, since, it's an e since it is an equation, I can ignore my denominators. The denominator is only there to figure out what x cannot equal. Well, x cannot equal 0, or x cannot equal negative 1 half, because I'm going to set both of these equal to 0. Once I figure out what x cannot equal, I can just ignore my denominator. But I only can ignore my denominator if I'm solving an equation. So now I only care about the numerator. This is going to be 4x plus 1 on the left. And now I'm ready to solve. So I'm going to subtract over the 1, and then divide by 4, and I get 0. However, x cannot be 0. So that's not going to work. So therefore, my answer is no solution. OK, let's look at number 12. Now I'm, just, I'm changing this problem around. I want to make sure that these two are switched. So let me rewrite the problem.
Okay, that's really what I want the problem to look like. Okay, so the first thing I want to do, since it's not a proportion, is I want to find, or I want to factor the denominators. So let me do that first. This one's already factored. This one's already factored. But now I gotta factor this one. That's gonna factor to y plus three and y minus two. Okay, now I gotta find the least common denominator. So I'm gonna have a fraction on the left and I'm gonna have a fraction on the right. So it looks like these two things are the same and these two things are the same. So I'm gonna bring down one of each of those. Okay, now I have to multiply the numerator by what's missing from the denominator. Well, this only has a y minus two. It doesn't have a y plus three. So that's going to give me, if I distribute, four y plus 12. Okay, the second fraction. It already has what it needs to have in its denominator. So this two is gonna stay the same, and actually it's a minus two. Okay, over here, this fraction already has a y plus three. It doesn't have a y minus two. So I gotta multiply the numerator by the y minus two because that's what it's missing. And if I distribute the 10, I get 10y minus 20. Now, since it's an equation, I'm allowed to cross off the denominator. But before I cross it off, I have to figure out what y, in this case, is not equal to. y can't be negative 3 or positive 2. Once I make note of what my variable cannot equal, I can cross off the denominator. But I can only do that if it's, a, if it's an equation. Now I'm going to solve with just the numerator. So the left side is going to simplify it to 4y plus 10, and the right side is just 10y minus 20. Okay, from there I'm going to just solve for y. So subtract this over, I get 6y. Add the 20 over, I get 30. Divide by 6, I get 5. y cannot be negative 3 or 2. It's allowed to be 5. So my answer is 5. So that is 6, 3.